Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Amber Living Vlog. This is Beyond Film School, and I'm Amber, and today we're talking about the key production assistant. Before we get into the video about the key production assistant, be sure to hit up the PayPal link. It really helps me out. Thank you to everyone that's contributed already. I love you guys. And if you are new to my channel, please remember to subscribe to keep getting updates on all the videos I do on the film industry. Some things happening with Beyond Film School. My PA class has been postponed, but it is happening on July 26th on a Sunday. And if you want to join my class, all the details will be below. I am also holding a, another virtual hangout Zoom meeting uh, when we're talking about film set horror stories. And that's going to be July 9th at three o'clock. And I'm going to have a couple of my film industry friends. I'm going to have Darren Kwan. And I'm also going to have one of my PA friends, Amaris McRae. Uh, she is really, really awesome. It's really going to be good to hear from her. Uh, both of those people are really good at giving you a really realistic view of the film industry. So I think it's going to be fun to talk about our worst days on set, what we've learned from them, and how we got through them. So let's jump into the key production assistant. Guys, this is the last video of the production assistant series. I can't believe we're on the last one. It's been a long journey, and I just want to thank everybody. <laughs> What is a key production assistant, a key PA? The key PA is the head chief, or the boss, or the head honcho, or the leader of all the PAs on set. They are the they're ultimate. The ultimate. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're basically pulling all the production assistant strings. You're my puppet now. I mean, when you think about a production, there are a lot of PAs and someone's got to be in charge of all those production assistants. On top of being the lead production assistant, they are also the right hand to the first AD. All right, so let's jump into some of the responsibilities of a key production assistant. Your main gig as a key production assistant is going to be delegating tasks that need to get done to your army of production assistants. Everyone comes to you when they need a PA to do something. Can I have a PA to go get breakfast I for this actor? Can I have a PA to go sit and holding for me? The writer and director need their breakfast. Coffee. And all of that is happening not even 10 minutes of you being on set as a key PA. You need to assign your PAs to all those tasks very quickly. It is your job as a key PA to pick the appropriate, and I really mean that, you have to pick the right PA for certain tasks because you're not gonna assign a PA that always messes up the breakfast order to get the director and the writer breakfast. You're not going to do it because you want to make sure that things get done and things get done right. Not only are you going to be delegating PAs for certain tasks, but you need to confirm with those PAs that that task got done. As a key PA, you need to know what PAs you have, where they are, and what they're doing at all times. Let's talk about some morning responsibilities for the key PA. So first thing in the morning, you're gonna have to make sure that you have the script notes, you retrieve them from the AD office or the honey wagon to make sure you give those script notes that the paperwork PA had last night, that they get back to the script supervisor. You also have to make sure to have all the call sheets and sides ready for the day to be passed out to all the crew members, director, and ADs. Now these are gonna be some responsibilities that happen throughout the day. As a key PA, you need to know what the shot is so you can set up your lockups. Lock it up, lock it up, lock it up, lock it up. Now that is a really, really big responsibility of a key PA because you're responsible if someone ruins a shot because you're supposed to have a PA protecting whatever the frame is. And also you have to make sure that you're setting sound lockup. So are people being quiet when we roll? So your main gig is to make sure you're setting efficient, appropriate lockups to protect the take. And ultimately, if you're setting good lockups and the PAs are doing their job, that means we don't have to do another take because of sound or because someone walked into the shot. And ultimately that affects the day because less takes mean less time on set and that means a shorter day. If your additional PAs, if your PAs are not doing their job, that is on you. If they're not locking it up appropriately, if they're not stopping that person from crossing the street into the shot, or if they're not keeping the crew quiet, that is on you and that is gonna be your fault. So you have to make sure that they know what they're doing and you have the right lockups and the right people on certain lockups. This is the responsibility that most key PAs don't like and that is being responsible for hiring all the additional PAs that a production needs. Now sometimes production will have certain must hires meaning producer nieces and nephews or daughters or whatever that they want to be a PA. And yes I'm here as part of your crew due to nepotism. And you don't have to worry about those people but in the instance where you have to hire like 15 additional PAs you have to find those people and book them for the days that extra PAs are needed. And to add frustration to that responsibility, cancellations. You're going to have people that are going to cancel on you. It could be last minute, could be a few days before the shoot, 
you never know, but it is your responsibility if that PA does not find a replacement, you have to find a replacement. And that just adds so much more to your plate during the day. And that is why key PAs hate that process. I mean, it's pretty cool that you can hire people, but at the same time, it takes a lot of time out of your day. Just a quick note to all the additional PAs out there who are day playing, do not cancel on your key PA. And if you cancel, find your own damn replacement. Let's jump into communication as a key PA. Now this is a huge responsibility for the key PA. It is your job to make sure that you are keeping producers, UPM, key second AD up to date on what's happening on set because they are not there. So you are in charge of a text thread, a text chain, and you're texting all those important people what is happening on set. What scene are we on? Did we turn around in the scene? Did we wrap an actor? Are we moving locations? Did we wrap? Are we on Martini? Are we on the Abbey? There's so many things that you need to make sure that they're aware of. If you don't update that thread, people are pissed. What's happening on set is vital information for everyone that's involved in a production and that involves the people who are not actually working on set. So it is your job to make sure you're communicating what's happening on set back to the people who are not on set. You're also doing this for Transpo as well. So in addition to the text chain that you are in charge of, you have to go on 16, the channel that the Transpo department is on. You have to let them know if we have moved on to a scene, if we turned around, if we've broken for lunch, are we on Martini, are we on the Abbey? you have to let them know play by play what's happening on set as well because they have to prepare a lot of the vans and trucks for certain things that are going to happen. If you don't update Transpo, that is a department that you don't want to piss off. You can't snub the Teamsters. You cannot forget the Teamsters. You can't because they will never let you live it down. They will be like, you forgot about us. I can't believe you didn't tell us. I'm not messing with the Teamsters. I'm just not. In addition to updating Transpo on the happenings on set, you are also kind of the liaison between everyone on set and Transpo. If we need certain vans to set, if we need a van to base camp, you are going to be the main communicator to Transpo. Transpo doesn't want a ton of people that go on their channel, so you are the filter. You're like the funnel, you're the bottleneck. There's not too many people who are going to be communicating with Transpo, or at least they shouldn't be. Um, there's about four people who should be doing that, and it's the key PA, the walkie PA, because they're usually gaffing a lot of the vans, and first team runner, because they're at base camp, and the key second AD. So those are pretty much the only people that should be talking to Transpo. Key PAs are also there to help communicate from the DP and director to the first AD and the other ADs on set. And this responsibility is shared most likely with the walkie PA. On top of that, the first AD sometimes is not on walkie or they don't use their walkie the entire time and they don't have an earpiece in their ear. You are communicating for the first AD to all the other PAs and to everyone on set. So you are also sometimes communicating for the first AD to the crew. You're sharing that responsibility most likely with the second, second AD on set, and sometimes they're not available to relay certain information. So you are there to make sure that there's always someone with the first AD in case the second, second is not available. You have to make sure as a key PA that all the PAs that you are in charge of know what is going on. Now, usually throughout the day on the walkie, the AD should be updating, but if they don't, you are there to make sure that that information is relayed if the ADs don't do it. So you are kind of like the last line of defense when it comes to communication. If it doesn't happen from any of the ADs above you, you have to make sure that everyone on set knows, and especially your PA so they can spread it to the crew as well. As a key PA, you're most likely one of the most experienced PAs on set and you're in charge of training green PAs or the new PAs that have never been on set before. You need to make sure that your army of PAs know what they're doing. So if they don't know what to do, you have to teach them how to do things. If they don't know how to lock it up, you teach them. So if you have a lot of new PAs on your set, you might be spending a lot of time trying to explain things and how they're done on set. As a key PA, <laughs> you are the complaint filter and I that's a negative way of going about it but if the crew members or any department needs anything they usually go to the key PA first because you don't want to go to the first AD straight out the gate you usually kind of go up the ladder so you are the main person that crew members are going to go to when they need something and that could be a complaint and it most likely is and also you are in charge of letting the crew know what the shot is, where it is safe for them to stage their gear and equipment, and just to make sure that their stuff is not going to be in the shot. So you have to make sure that they know where they can move their stuff. And you use your PAs to help you do that. 
And quick tip number three or two, I have no idea which one I'm on. But as the key PA, the walkie PA, you have to remember is your right hand. They're there to help you out and you have to utilize them. You don't have to take the weight of the world on your shoulders when you're on set. You have someone that is there to help you. All right, so now we're getting to some of the wrap out responsibilities on set for the key PA. Once camera's wrapped, you are gonna have call sheets on you. You have to make sure to distribute those to all the PA so they have call sheets so they can give them out to the crew members when you assign them to their truck. It is your job to make sure that a PA is assigned to each department to get the out times and paperwork for the paperwork PA. You also have to make sure before the director and the writer and the first AD leave set that they have their call sheets and you're also going to make sure that the writer and the director make it to their van because they usually will have a van that takes them home. And also you're going to make sure that Transpo knows that we are wrapped. And on top of that, you have to make sure you get the script notes from the script supervisor to make sure those get to the paperwork PA so they put that information on the production report. So all of that is happening in a span of like two minutes. As a key PA, I find that the time of the day that is most stressful for me is the wrap out. All right, so we're gonna talk about some of the characteristics that you would need as a key production assistant. You have to keep in mind that as a key PA, you are a manager. You are, you have your own team. The additional PAs are your people and you have to make sure to get the best out of your team. So you have to know how to manage personalities, what person is best suited for what task, certain things like that. Making sure that your team works for you and with you. So you have to know how to be a leader. You have to make sure you have some leadership skills and there has to be a certain amount of confidence that goes with that. Um, you can't be a leader of all these PAs and you know not at least look like you know what you're doing. Listen, you're gonna have to fake it until you make it. And you're gonna have to tap into your mentoring and teaching skills because there might be a PA that has never stepped on set and you're gonna have to teach them and give them quick lessons on what they need to know so they can do their job for you. Now, you also have to be really, really organized because you are booking people and you have to remember who you hired and for what days and how many days they might be on so you have really if you're not organized it's just going to be a mess for you so key pas really deal in communication and you really got to tap into your communication skills and learn how to clearly communicate to make sure that you're effectively and efficiently communicating all that needs to be done for the pas to understand what you need so this can be a real real hard one for a lot of key pas is staying calm in a stressful situation like learning how to deal with a lot of things happening at once and not freaking out or getting frustrated or getting upset. So like with any position on set, the key PA is also dealing with a lot of different people. But since they're in a leadership role, they have to learn how to get the best out of people. So it really helps to be personable and be a people person. I have people skills. You also have to be, as a key PA, a problem solver. There are things that are gonna come up and you have to figure out the best way to solve that problem as quickly as possible. Remember, as a key PA, you are there to make the job of the ADs easier. So the people above you, all the ADs, you're there to make sure that their day goes a little bit smoother and a little bit easier. I think this goes unsaid a lot of the time for a lot of people working in teams, but you have to learn how to trust your team. So learning how to trust your PAs is a really big thing that you need to learn how to do. And it's really hard for new, new keys to do that. When you trust your team, it, you'll, your day will be a lot less stressful. You're gonna have a lot to do during your day and you have to figure out and prioritize certain tasks that have to get done throughout your day. So time management is a really, really big one for key PAs. So a couple of side notes for the key production assistant. As a key PA, you need to be thinking as an AD. And I mean, the next level after key PA is definitely gonna be an AD. So if you're thinking like an AD, the transition to being an AD is only gonna be easier for you if you start thinking like an AD. If you can key PA well, which, King is very, very stressful, is very, very hard. So if you can handle being a key PA, you can definitely handle being an AD. And if you key well, you can AD well. So I have to say it, I've said it in all the other PA videos. And the background PAs have a really, really long day. Yes, the walkie PA does have a long day. Now the paperwork PA could have a long day. Key PA has a long day. They are there before crew call and they are one of the last PAs to leave for the day. One thing that really, really sucks about being a key PA is that you have so much more responsibility. 95% of the time though, you are paid just as much as the brand new green PA stepping on set for the first time. Wait, what? No joke, you are paid just as much as any other PA on set. I've said 95% of the sets because there are some sets who give key PAs a few dollars more an hour. 
but that's rare. That is probably the most unfair thing I have experienced in my life. So much more responsibility, but just not being paid for it, and it sucks. It sucks. So that is it for the key production assistant video, and that's it for the series. The entire PA series is all complete. I've done all the PA positions. They're there. All the videos are there. Be sure to check out that playlist if you're looking at other PA positions to learn about. Um, that playlist will be below for you. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please comment below. I'd be happy to hear from you. Um, if you want to email me, please do so at beyondfilmschool at gmail.com. And that is it for now, guys. I shall see you guys next time.